Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the west. More specifically, we are on Hollywood Boulevard here in Hollywood, California, and I've came here to Hollywood Boulevard to check out a brand new attraction just in time for the Halloween season. We are outside of Icons of Darkness. A, I suppose this is a large, enormous collection of movie monster props, a monster museum right here on Hollywood Boulevard. I've heard they have some really cool stuff in there. I'm kind of going in a little bit blind. I've just heard a little bit here, a little bit there, but all the things I've heard are very good. So please, follow me. here to greet us as we enter this horrible beast oh my gosh then in the front window here we have a predator and he's fighting off three xenomorphs they're coming at him from all directions he's got his little mouth popper thing coming out he's in for the battle of a lifetime and just another hideous beast love love all these beasts here this one's got like his guts showing, but he's still, still pretty evil. Pretty got that, that that ghoulish snarl on his face, and just look at those hands. Oh my gosh! Oh look at this. We got Sasquatch right here. That is a big, beautiful Sasquatch there. Look how big his feet are. And then we have the Terminator. We have Arnie here without any skin or muscles. Ah, oh, love that Sasquatch. That is Michael Keaton's screen used bat suit. Okay, so that was actually worn by Michael Keaton. Michelle Pfeiffer's original Catwoman suit. Oh, wow. David Vito's original Penguin costume. These are all original costumes. That's pretty amazing. Now, keep an eye on the neck pieces as we go through these because you're going to see how things kind of developed and evolved as we go through. Okay. This is Nick Fury's original costume in Psycho from the Age of Ultron. And we have screen used costumes from Batman and Roger this year. Notice how the neck piece is all still one solid element on the bat suit? Yeah. And then Christian Bale's production made bat suit from Batman Begins is right here. Again, one solid neck piece on it. We have Alicia Silverstone's uh, Silverstone screen used back row costume. And over here, this is really cool. We have Wesley Snipes costume, weapons and effects head from Blade 2. This was actually used for the one sheet poster as well from that movie. Willem Dafoe's original Green Goblin helmet from Spider-Man. And then we have Tobey Maguire's original costume and muscle suit from Spider-Man 2. I feel like I was lied to for years because I always thought I had to go to the gym to look like that. But apparently you can just airbrush. Just so, so Tobey Maguire really wasn't that ripped? In a lot of cases, if, I'll put it this way. If you have the option to put someone in a costume and kind of pat it out a little bit, you'll end up doing that. Go for it. But if someone's going to be shirtless running around, there's no way to really fix that. <laughs> That's why Hugh Jackman, they just didn't put him in X-Men suits in the last couple of months because... <laughs> You look like that, why hide yourself a mother? Yeah. But that is his original battle suit from the first X-Men movie. That is Christopher Reeve's flying suit up there from Superman 1 and Superman 2. We also have Judge Dredd's costume. Stallone's name is on the inside of that on the tag. And Peter Weller's costume from Robocop, Robocop 2. They actually changed it to metallic teal blue in Robocop 2 from the transition from Robocop 1. It's because they made so many toys when Robotop, Robocop 2 came out. It was cheaper to produce teal toys than it was to produce metallic chrome silver toys. So they changed the movie instead of the exactly, toys? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Corporate America in the 80s, right? <laughs> we had Patrick Wilson's screen use Night Owl costume Oh, that's right from here. The Watchmen. I love the texture on this. I'm such yeah, a fan of it. Because it looks like actual owl feathers. Yeah, feathers. Now here's something really cool. Um, this is the last of those traditional bat suits this is Val Kilmer's sonar suit from Batman Forever. But if you contrast all of these with Christian Bale's Dark Knight costume, that's the first one where the neck was actually able to move. And it's also because they did a system. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. <laughs> they did a system <laughs> where they wanted it to look more like body armor. Yeah. 
but also it was just more flexible and allowed the stuntmen to have just a greater degree of fluidity of motion. And as we come through here, we hope you like dinosaurs. Absolutely. <laughs> we have over here, these are actually screen used puppets from Gremlins. Oh, okay, this is one of my favorite movies of all time, Gremlins. Well, Rick Baker's original Gizmo puppet. That's the original Gizmo? The original Gizmo. Oh my gosh. This is Mila Kunis's costume and makeup appliances from Oz the Great and Powerful, sitting right next to the original Wicked Witch of the West. And then going from something small to something so big. So this was actually worn by Margaret Hamilton? It's a live cast of Margaret Hamilton. It's not her original costume, okay. but we put it to contrast the one that we have right okay. there. This is the T-Rex from Lost World. This is the animatronic head. Oh, wow. Yeah, this apparently was the dinosaur that sneezed on the kids. The actual screen news puppet that screen sneezed on the kids in Jurassic Park 1. Original Velociraptor hatchling and eggs from Jurassic Park there. And below that is a screen news Pteranodon head from Jurassic Park 3. That's the amazing. And then there's this. This is the Spinosaurus, Spinosaurus. from Jurassic Park 3. Okay. It's screen used. The scenes where it clamps down on the plane, this is the one that they used. So that's why you see all the cracking right there around the mouth. It actually tells the story of the use inside of that movie. Your you Goro? Combat at all? It's the Goro. Is this? Uh... It's made from molds. Okay, it's so made from the to create Goro. mold from the uh, Mortal Kombat One movie. Yep. There were three puppeteers that operated this thing. There was a guy inside of the suit. The head was right about here. Then you had a guy behind him with a remote control controlling the arms and the fingers. And then you had a puppeteer that was controlling the head. Oh, that's amazing. This is a screen used Morton Lurks costume and armor from Fellowship of the Ring. This is the guy that gave Sean Bean his like 85th screen death probably because <laughs> he just can't stay alive in movies. <laughs> These are uh, two screen used Slee Stacks from Land of the Lost. Slee Stacks? Yeah, the reboot that they did in 2009. Oh, with Will, Will Ferrell? Yep, that one. And then we have some prosthetics and makeup from different Lord of the Rings movies. Here, we have a lot of Star Wars stuff. This is actually a traveling costume that was used by ILM whenever they did premieres for Empire Strikes Back. Okay. And then we have a production made Darth Vader helmet for episode four and uh, episode five. Over here, we've got Jennifer Lawrence's screen used costume and original bow, arrow, and quiver from Hunger Games. We have Kate Beckinsale's original costume from Underworld Evolution. If you're into Harry Potter, this is Daniel Radcliffe's screen use costume from Deathly Hallows Part 2. Oh, that's cool. And that's his original acceptance letter to Hogwarts. Is the acceptance letter used in the movie? Yep. That's, that's so the one cool. when he's at Privet Drive and it all just starts flying around. We had the T-800 endoskeleton here from, uh, from Terminator 2. And then we have the one from Terminator Salvation. This one's a little bit bold here. This thing took eight puppeteers. Really? Like this model of it. Uh, basically, the first Terminator, they made it out of composite plastic, and then they switched over to actual chrome when they did Terminator 2, and it doubled up the weight. So just moving that amount was just insane. This is Arnold's screen use costume from Terminator 3, Robert Patrick's standing chrome head and bullet hit police uniform from Terminator 2. And this is Arnold's stunt head in the original costume from Terminator 2 when he takes out the entire LAPD. <laughs> this is actually a live cast of his face as well. And that's an effects head. It was used as a test version um, when they were doing that movie. The cool thing with these is that it's actually a process that a lot of effects houses will use because you have to keep paying actors to be on set even when you're doing the pre-production stuff. <laughs> So instead of paying Arnold an exorbitant amount of money, they would just do a live cast of his head and then develop prosthetics and things like that on that so they knew that it would fit in the time game. This is the K250 robot stand-in from Brody 1, which is actually my favorite Star Wars movie. Oh, wow. This is the one that would be used for scenes where they had to interact with it just to kind of give them something to work with. Okay, so they'd use this and then they'd see, would they CGI over it later? Well, not necessarily. This was really something to give people to interact with. Yeah. Gareth Edwards really liked a lot of practical effects and things like that, which is hard to do in a Star Wars yeah. these days, but it's very admirable to go with them, you know? Uh, we also have Ray Park's screen-used Darth Maul costume over there. Oh, wow. Actual screen-used Darth Maul. I apologize. Original Darth Maul costume. Uh, basically,
typically they'll make a variety of costumes for these movies just in case something ever happens, mm. you know? Because, I mean, you can't just come up with a brand new yeah, yeah, yeah. bat suit on the fly if you're in the middle of 12-hour building days. So they have these on standby made by the production. Uh, we have an original screen-used Tusken Raider helmet there from Star Wars Episode Four. Oh, wow, using the original Star Wars movie, that helmet. And then we have some of the really cool aliens going on over here. Oh, wow. This is the metal one of mutant. It's made from the original head, hands, and feet balls that were created from this island earth, which is insane that those are still around. <laughs> we have the original eyeball ring from Mars Attacks over here. We also have the original ray gun as well. Okay, some props from Mars Attacks. These are some Rick Baker creations. We have the Rick Baker Bay Worm guy from Men in Black 2. We also have the Split guy head from Men in Black. These are original screen use host and space jockey aliens from Independence Day. This is the one that Will Smith was dragging through the desert oh, wow. <laughs> when it was the parachute. And this is the one that they cut open when they were uh, doing the scene in Area 51. Makeup prosthetics from Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes reboot back oh, in 2001. Wow. And then we have a Gorilla Warrior costume here from Planet of the Apes. All right, let's go into the creepy hallway. All right. Are they going to jump out here again? This is the horror section that we have. You'll see Hannibal Lecter on your right. Behind you, we got Jack Torrance from The Shining. Yeah. All work and no play. That is the Pale Man prosthetics that Doug Jones wore from Man's Labyrinth. And take a guess and see if you can remember what that's from. Uh, what is this? This one stumps everybody. I don't get it. That's actually the mailman from Men in Black 2. When Tom okay. Jones first looks around and realizes he's working with aliens, that's one of the first ones they see. Okay. And it's actually got the. He's got like the animatronic. Yeah, it's got controls. the animatronic controls that would move his head around as he was working too. It's really cool that those parts of it exist. This is the costume from the nut. I always get nervous walking by this. <laughs> head from Hellraiser. We have Twisty the Clown from American Horror Story. Oh yeah. And over here, Freddy. <laughs> That is actually Robert England's costume from Dream Warriors, Nightmare on Elm Street 5. <laughs> <laughs> this is the girl's costume from The Ring when they found her in the closet. Oh yeah, when her mouth was struck. And this is actually Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise costume. Oh, so this is one used in the new <laughs> It movie? Yep. Oh wow. That's crazy. Alright, so First, we have first screen used in more plane from the original more created uh, Alien, 1979. And then we have the original screen used uh, clone body. Okay. The fourth movie. Uh, they're saying that this mold is actually weighs about the same as the actual body. Oh wow. To ask the uh, realism. There's the droid. Popping open. Oh, it's the alien predator hybrid? Yes. Half alien, half predator. people operated that? Yeah. <laughs> oh! What was that? Jeez! <laughs> Predators. These costumes. Chucky. Different Chucky dolls. So don't worry, this is not gonna 
one. This one doesn't show? Okay. This one is Queen Yu's puppet uh, and a tricycle from uh, Saw. From Saw. Oh! Jeez. God. Oh, man. And we have the Queen Yu's Xenomorph. It's like a human yeah. puppet, they put their whole body in there. Basically, yes. We have the original screen used mask from the mask. Oh, so this is actually the, the mask that was used in the movie with Jim Carrey? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Then we have the two walkers from The Walking Dead, the Patient Zero, and the Bicycle Girl. Oh, wow. And here above, we have Michael Jackson. in the thriller video. It's the werewolf version. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay, so which movie was this used in? Uh, I think it was used in Lost World. Lost World, okay. Pride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein himself, Dracula. It's different life cast of all the uh, actors there. It's a mummy. It's Boris Karloff is the mummy. Oh, there's a werewolf from Werewolf in London and a wolf man. From the howling. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice and the headhunter. There. The Beetlejuice sandworm. That's that dummy from the original Exorcist. Oh, so this dummy is actually used in the. Yeah. Uh, so it's gonna. Oh, my gosh. Oh! Okay, it's coming from behind that time. <laughs> this one's using this. Oh! There she goes. Oh, who's that? Yeah, Joker. Yeah, the original from the mold from the original Jurassic Park. Yes. Then we're coming out to the last section of the tour. Oh yeah. Original stunt headed costume, wow. Yeah. To the left we have Cowboy and uh, Dave. You can see the wear and tear on the costume because uh, most of these shots were filmed inside uh, Walkway. Oh, okay. Uh, couple of X-Men guys and the Rocketeer. Yeah, the Rocketeer. It's Dr. Doom. Benjamin Button. Oh, this is the different stages of Benjamin Button there. And, uh, Tim Carey's uh, Grinch. Oh, wow. It's the original costume and makeup from the Grinch. The spiders from Arachnophobia. Oh, look at this. This is Johnny. Yeah, this is actual costume used in Edward Scissorhands, one of my favorite all-time movies. Oh, and that is an original pair of his actual scissor hands. That's crazy. Juggernaut. It's the originally restored spider head from the thing there. That's amazing. Rise of the Silver Surfer. They had him walk around in this on screen. Yeah. And 
then they would paint it over with a layer of CGI. Okay. Which is kind of almost counterproductive when you think about it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, they had the footage. Why did they? <laughs> but the cool thing is we have this now. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. And the Edward Scissorhands costume, I always find new details whenever I walk by and look at it. Like, the moon buckle is one thing. But also, I mean, if you look oh, at yeah, the I don't know. I've seen this movie probably a hundred times. I don't know if I ever noticed that he had yeah. a moon on his buckle. Take a look at the boot right there. It actually has a handle on the right boot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, so just like various yeah. bits and bobs attached to his costume. And these were the hands that those were used? Those are the actual hands. We have those in a glass case just because they're metal. Yeah. <laughs> so we felt, you know, safety is a good thing. Oh, man, also, they're amazing. so heavy that it would be really hard to kind of fasten them. Yeah, Johnny Depp definitely put in the work with that one, having to wear all that. It's, it's nuts. It's amazing. And then we actually have, that is the arc reactor that Gwyneth Paltrow pulled out of his chest when she's doing the makeshift surgery on him. Oh yeah? Yeah, huh. that's it. This was Robin Williams' costume and... And his prosthetics. And his, out, and his prosthetics. Yeah, and the E.T. is pretty crazy. So that's used from the original that's, mold? That is the original mold. It's crazy to think that those were still around, you know? I mean... They saved them? 40 years. I imagine there's just probably a warehouse full of <laughs> stuff like that out there. It's like the Raiders of the Largest Lost Art Warehouse. And then these over here, we have Chris O'Donnell's original Robin suit from Batman Forever, Val Kilmer's Panther suit. And then we have Michael Keaton's screen new bat suit over here from uh, the original 89 Batman. Wow. I personally love the Kilmer Batman suit for some reason. I think it's because I grew up with 90s Batman. Yeah. And 90s Batman had such like exaggerated physique drawn on and everything, <laughs> yeah. so it just feels like so, it feels so right. Yeah. Minus the nipples. You know. <laughs> and the nipples were, were a big uh, yeah. <laughs> point of contention. Yeah, I know, there's been 20 years of jokes about that. So these are eight screen news Gremlins from Gremlins 2. That's so cool. I, I love the Gremlins movies. Gremlins 2 was a little different. It was also a parody of the original Gremlins, but still pretty cool. Amazing to see these Gremlins in real life, and yeah, I can't get over that. That's the original gizmo from Gremlins 2. Amazing tour here at Icons of Darkness. It is a guided tour, so they do take you through and show you the different props, and then they activate props to scare you <laughs> while you're, you're going through. So I think I got jumped by the Joker Freddy Krueger, there was a raptor head, and then uh, Reagan from The Exorcist uh, came at me. They said they're actually expanding, they're gonna have a new location. Um, they said in February, I guess they're gonna have uh, a second location in the same area. So I guess they're gonna, they said they're gonna have a double their exhibit space. So yeah, we'll definitely come back here next time I am in uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood, and uh, see what they have. Try to process one of my favorite things, the gremlins seeing these used Gremlins. Now, I said Gremlins 1 was, was one of my favorite movies, but uh, I, I probably watched Gremlins 2 more as a kid. Um, I didn't even realize that it was supposed to be a parody. I just loved it. And uh, so yeah, seeing those, those real Gremlins from that movie really brought something back and seeing the real Gizmo, that's pretty amazing. I have replicas of Gizmo and Gremlins in my bunker but uh, I don't have a real one for the movie, so always really cool to be able to see that. And then Edward Scissorhands. Again, probably these are both probably in my top five uh, favorite movies. So just uh, be able to, to, to see the detail on the suit, to see the scissors up close. That movie meant so much to me growing up, and it just really means a lot to be able to, to be that close to it and see that, to see bits and pieces of your childhood like that is amazing. Yeah, one of the best, uh, movie prop uh, collections I've seen um, and yeah, here in uh, here in, in Los Angeles Hollywood that's where movies are made so I guess it's to be expected but yeah I, I would definitely recommend this um, this is uh, right on Hollywood Boulevard the Ripley's it's right across there kind of the touristy section and uh, definitely worth coming in off the street and seeing these beautiful beautiful monsters um, thank you so much for watching uh, if you'd like to subscribe, it'll let you know when new videos come out. Uh, I've been trying to upload fairly regularly. I've been uploading almost every day in, in recent history. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. And uh, also have some uh, 
enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that just helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.